Okay students, in this video I'd like to do a quick review of temperature and uh, doing temperature conversions. Between the three major temperature scales, we know that the three scales that we have are Celsius, Kelvin, and Fahrenheit. And uh, we're going to use mainly Celsius and Kelvin in this class, but you also do need to know how to convert from Fahrenheit because that's the temperature scale that is used mainly for weather. For example, if in the temperature in a room here in the United States, we have not shifted to Celsius the way that much of the world has, has done. So if you encounter a, a Fahrenheit temperature, you need to be able to convert it to Celsius. Now in our labs, we will very often be measuring our lab experiments at Celsius temperature, and then you can convert that very easily to Kelvin's. Okay, I'd like to take a quick note here and remind you that Kelvin is an absolute scale. That is, the zero Kelvin on the scale is called absolute zero because that is the theoretical point at which there is no energy, no thermal energy in a substance. It is theoretically impossible for that to ever occur but that is given the zero value. And then thermal energy is scaled up from there. In contrast, the zero degree Celsius mark is defined to be the freezing point of water. So when you are freezing water, that frozen water has a lot of thermal energy in it already. So it's way above absolute zero on the Kelvin scale. Notice that zero degrees Celsius equals, and this should be a positive, I know that that little mark makes it look like a negative, but this is a positive value. Zero degrees Celsius equals a positive 273.15 Kelvins. You may have learned that 273 number in your previous chemistry, but we are going to expand it to two more significant figures to be more precise in this class. So you need to use the 273.15 value when you're doing Celsius to Kelvin conversions. Notice also that Celsius and Fahrenheit have little degree symbols, but Kelvin does not. There is no such thing as a degree Kelvin. They are just called Kelvins. So you can have 50 Kelvins, you can have 500 Kelvins. They are not degrees Kelvin, okay? Now moving up from the freezing point of water to the boiling point of water, on the Celsius scale, it is defined to be 100 degrees Celsius. These are considered to be exact numbers because they are defined numbers. However, these values on the Kelvin scale are not exact, they are approximated. So that gives us five sig figs for each of those. Notice that there are 100 degrees Celsius between freezing and boiling of water, and there are exactly 100 Kelvins between freezing and boiling water. When we get over to the Fahrenheit scale, notice that's not the case. There, there is not a difference of 100 degrees between freezing and boiling water on the Fahrenheit scale. There are 180 degrees so this is, very, this is a very important ratio. There is a 100 degree uh, difference here on the Celsius scale from freezing to boiling water. And the same for the Kelvin scale. But on the Fahrenheit scale, that exact same thermal differential is 180 degrees. So notice that that gives us a ratio, 100 to 180. Well, 100 divided by 180, that ratio simplifies to 5 ninths. And you will see that ratio pop up later down here when we are converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's where that 5 ninths comes from because it is a a ratio an to allow us to adjust between the two scales. 
All right, with that in mind, we've got a couple of uh, uh, conversion equations here. I've given you the equation to convert from Celsius to Kelvins and from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And I just want to remind you that you do have a periodic table that you have been provided for this course. And on the back of the periodic table is a list of equations and some other useful information. And notice that we have the conversion equation from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And there we have the 100 to 180 ratio, which of course is the same as the 5 over 9 ratio. So this equation will allow you to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. You will not be given the equa this equation here. You will be expected to memorize this equation. So memorize this one. You should know that Celsius and Kelvin scales are different by 273.15, okay? So you need to memorize this one. This one was provided for you. All right? Okay, with that in mind, I've given you a sample problem. So I would like for you to work on this sample problem. There are its two parts. I've given you the room temperature in Fahrenheit, 72.1 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an approximate average room temperature for a cool room. And I'm asking you first, convert that temperature in degrees Celsius, and then convert that temperature into Kelvins. I want you to show your work, which means using these equations, showing me the equations you're using before you plug in the answers. When you're done with that math, then I want you to go down here and answer these, see if you can answer these four uh, concept questions, just to make sure that you're tracking what's going on. So, when you're done with doing this math, doing this pro sample problem, and with answering these four questions, I would like for you to resume the video, and then I'll work through this with you. So go ahead and pause the video now and do that work. Okay, I'm assuming you're coming back from having done this work, and now I'll work through it with you and we'll see what we get. So first of all, the room temperature was measured to be 72.1 degrees Fahrenheit. In A, we're going to convert the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I need this equation right here. I want to convert it to Celsius, so I'm solving for degrees Celsius. And the equation is already set up that way, so I don't have to rearrange it. Temperature in Celsius equals 5 ninths times temperature in Fahrenheit. And notice that this is a minus 32. All right. Now I plug in values. 5 ninths. Temperature in Fahrenheit is 72.1 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. All right. And then if I plug that into my, calcul in my calculator, obviously I have to do what's in parentheses first. So the 72.1 minus 32. I could have done that probably without my calculator, but it gives me uh, 40.1 as my answer. Well, the question is, how do I treat this 32 and this 5 ninths? Well, the convention is that this 5 ninths is an exact number, so it will not limit my sig figs when I do the multiplication. What about the 32? This is also considered to be exact. So this 32 is not going to limit my precision when I do this subtraction. So this is going to be 5 ninths times 40.1. Because 72 minus 72.1 minus 32 is 40.1. And I'm not going to round that to, to, to just 40 because that 32 is considered to be an exact number, so it does have additional digits beyond it. All right, now I plug that into my calculator, and 40.1 times 5 equals, and divided by 9 equals, gives me 22.27777. Now I round it. This is exact. 
three sig figs. So I round my answer to three sig figs and it's 22.3. What are the units? This is a degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius. 22.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's calculating the Celsius temperature. Now that we have the Celsius temperature, we can do part B. We can calculate the Kelvins. So I have my equation up here. Temperature in Celsius is Kelvins minus 273. So temperature in Celsius equals temperature in Kelvins minus 273.15 to be specific. I need to rearrange this to solve for Kelvins now, right? So I, if I need to add this value to both sides, so it's temperature Celsius, oops, plus, plus uh, 273.15 equals temperature in Kelvins. So I'm going to take this value, 22.3 plus 273.15 equals temperature in Kelvins. So when I do the math, uh, I'm going to get 2. 95.45 equals 295.45. So just checking my math, 295.45. Okay, now I need to apply my sig fig rules for the addition. Addition sig fig rule says that I cannot report this answer out to that place that second place past the decimal because this number was not known to that degree of precision. So I can only go out one place past the decimal. So that four is going to be rounded up to a five. So my answer is 295.5 units Kelvins, not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvins. And there's my answer. Hopefully you've got the same answer I did. Taking a look at these concept questions, let's just make sure that we understand what's going on here. Which is a smaller unit of measurement? So we're talking about the units of measurement that we're using, not where it appears on the scale or how many of them you have. So if you have a degree Celsius, a degree Fahrenheit, or a Kelvin, which is the smaller unit of measurement? Well, let's go back up here to our scale. We can see that from the from this span, from freezing to boiling water, there are 100 degrees Celsius. In the same distance, from freezing to boiling water, there are 100 Kelvins. So a, a degree Celsius and a Kelvin, they are the same size of unit. But notice over here that in that same span, it takes 180 degrees Fahrenheit to make that same span. So that must mean that a degree Fahrenheit is a smaller unit of measurement than a Celsius or a Kelvin because it takes 180 of them to make up this distance. So which is the smaller unit of measurement? The degree Fahrenheit is the smaller unit of measurement. And a degree Celsius is the same size unit of measurement as the Kelvin. All right, which is the higher temperature? One degree Celsius, one degree Fahrenheit, or one Kelvin? Well, I think right away you can tell that one Kelvin is going to be really, really, really cold. That temperature is going to be way down here, right? Where is one degree Fahrenheit going to be? It's going to be somewhere around here, right? There's 32, so one degree Fahrenheit would be somewhere down here below the freezing point of water. One degree Celsius, on the other hand, is going to be up a little bit higher. It's going to be just above the freezing point of water. So which is a higher temperature? One Kelvin or one Fahrenheit, one degree Fahrenheit, or one degree Celsius? One degree Celsius is the higher temperature. Okay. Now, which is colder? I think we've already answered, we've just answered this. Which is colder? Well, obviously, for the same, uh, by the same argument, one Kelvin, that is only one Kelvin above absolute zero. It's right there. So 
one Kelvin is the colder temperature of those, those three. And which is impossible for you to have? Negative one degree Celsius, is that impossible? No, we've got negative Celsius over here. Negative one degree Celsius would be right there. Negative one degree Fahrenheit? No, that's not impossible. Look, we've got, we've got negative Fahrenheit degrees all the way down to negative 460, right? So it'd be somewhere around here. Negative one Kelvin? That's the impossible one because Kelvin is an absolute scale with zero at its lowest absolute value, absolute zero value. So there are no negative Kelvins. So it is impossible, at least according to the science that we're going to discuss in this class, it is impossible to have a negative Kelvin. Okay? And that's temperature.